The Tafel Commute, Season 10, Episode 3, Fear, in which Sean and I do a deep dive into all things scary about teachers and teaching. Let's go. Yeah, I was wondering. <laughs> yeah, well, I knew one of one of us was going to do that. I was just like, he's taken his ten seasons to actually do a Halloweenish so I kind of start to. I it, know. To it. I know, and of course, you know, it did take us ten seasons, and we're going to be late. If you're listening to this, you are listening. Obviously not on Halloween because we're recording this on it Halloween. It is actually it's, we're recording Halloween. Yes, yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. Well, and so you'll be hearing this a couple of weeks afterwards and thinking, "What?" Yeah, <laughs> so uh, it's kind of the day when I walk around. This is my bar humbug day because I walk around going, but "We don't. Britain is not really a Halloween place." It's one of those, one of those traits that we seem to have taken on as a country. I mean, when I was a kid, we did go overboard, but now it's <sighs> well, it started coming to Spain as well. The big Halloween uh, stuff, which hadn't been around before, and people are beginning to do it here as well before we go any further if you were just joining us and wondering what you are listening to this is the Tuffle commute we're a po- we're two english teachers podcasting about uh not about language teaching but the topic often comes up uh, my name is lindsay kleinfield and i'm sure will do that today the topic will indeed come up <laughs> yes we're although it is halloween we're not doing like a halloween lesson or a halloween episode rather we are doing an episode all about fear because fear is something that does kind of connect into uh teaching and learning and language classes uh in several interesting ways and the more we started making notes about this the more we thought wow this is enough here to be a real bumper episode um, <laughs> it's not a good thing for the listener. A bumper, that, a bumper yeah, as like, of as every, all the listeners casually l- look down at their podcast and think, two hours? <laughs> no, <laughs> no, this will not be a two-hour episode. No, it's, it's like in the um, comment section, what are you afraid of? Bumper episodes of the Tefl community. <laughs> exactly. But let's. Uh, we've divided this into sections. First of all, we're going to talk about what teachers are afraid of, as we are teachers and we've been afraid of things. So there's like certain teacher fears that are quite common. Um, um, then we're going to look at what makes teachers frightening, so scary teachers, and 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 then finally, like other things that make students afraid, and how and and how fear and phobias and stuff kind of all fit into English language teaching. So the first thing of like what teachers are afraid of, um, Sean, do you know what glossophobia is? Well, I probably can work it out because Glosso would be speaking and phobia would obviously be fear of. So fear of speaking? It is indeed. It's fear of speaking in public. And this is, uh, I think it's one of like the top fears, although I think we have a quiz about this, but I think it is a very common fear. And for teachers, certainly novice teachers, I'd probably say it is the, it was the, it is often the number one fear. Did you have a uh, fear of uh, speaking? Well, it's a what? It's a one fear that will really cripple you if you're a teacher, I suppose. Well, yeah, kind of. If you if you really are a glossophobe, then teaching possibly isn't for you, is it? Yeah. Um, does that? Um, uh, did I ever suffer from it? No, I don't think so. I think it's. I think that. I think there's that. Um, um, uh, anxiety paralysis, that kind of before you begin. But I, for me, it's always like that point. It's, I guess it's akin to um, you know doing the, the doing a play. You might be nervous in rehearsal, but it, it something kicks yeah. in when you've got to perform. Um, I think it also kind of manifests itself in different ways. So teachers start teaching. And after a while of teaching, they're used to their classes. So they're not afraid of speaking in front of the class. But then if you say to that teacher, now you're going to do a workshop 
for your colleagues, then they might have the fear. And then if you say, now you're going to do a workshop for a conference for 30 people you've never met before who are your peers, then the fear might come back again. And then if someone says, you're going to do a plenary for like 1,500 people, then oh, you might get the fear no, again. No. I'm thinking of all the counseling sessions I had to have with you last year when somebody said that to you. <laughs> yeah, um, exactly. Right. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, no, so it is. A rec- but I don't, I don't think I suffer from glossophobia. No, I, but, but I think we've talked about it mentioned this before there is a bit about teaching where i think that um being not the phobia the 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 fear of i mean is it what would be an extension of 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 nervousness and anxiety wouldn't it and actually being yeah. nervous about starting a new class or talking out in front of a thousand people is actually not a bad thing because no I, no it can motivate you to do better yeah and i think the adrenaline kick that that can bring with it is quite a good thing uh, another thing that I, uh, another interesting thing that fear that teachers have, I think, especially at the beginning, and some teachers still have it. I still get this occasionally, and this was a quote I read. I'll just share you the quote. Perhaps one of the most common fear in all professions and not just teaching is that of inadequacy. If you're a professional athlete or a career politician or a teacher or a doctor, everyone has his or her own moments of doubt. Yes. True, true, true for teachers. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah, that's, for I mean, English I teachers that, more than other I would, teachers. I want to say that's true because I, I think uh, we actually built that in from the beginning in the, in the sense of uh, self reflection. I think yeah. that, you know if you if you would naturally self reflect on your lessons to to look at how to improve them or whatever that the doubt the 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 flip side of that is uh, doubting yourself. <laughs> yeah, did, did I? Yeah, <laughs> and I think there is that sort of fear you often hear with t- is teachers like, oh, I'm such a phony, or uh, you know, if like I've been saying all of this and what do I like? You know, uh, maybe I don't know, or imposter maybe I am syndrome. just a fraud. Yeah, the imposter syndrome, quite common. And I suppose I've always considered it very common in teachers, but that's because. I'm a teacher and I hang out with teachers and I spend time with teachers. I guess if I hung out with doctors or lawyers, I'm, I, I'm sure there must be that that goes on sometimes there as well. No? I would imagine so. Um, uh, with it, I like you. I mean, most of the people I surround myself with are teachers. So I know certainly they, I would say it was true of those, but I'll ask my neighbors are doctors. I'll ask them if they're, if they're, <laughs> yeah. Do you ever <laughs> fear that you're faking it? <laughs> yeah. Are you yeah. an imposter? Just don't, don't ask, I would never ask a doctor that just before going under the knife, <laughs> yes, but, yeah. um, um, all right. Hey, what other things? What other? You said you'd found some things well, that actually, teachers are afraid of. I'm going to I was just thinking about. Uh, I'm thinking generally because um, we were talking about the we were, when we were talking about the fear of uh, of speaking at them uh, uh, to start with. I was thinking about you know on those four week courses on which we uh, work. Um, I think uh, a new teacher um, is often a f- uh, has a fear of silence. I don't know. I don't know what the technical term for fear oh, of silence is. Yeah. It's like, idea, a, like a like like the fear of open space, but in terms of sound rather than physical yeah, space. Yeah, that, that um, you know, that it's not the fear of them speaking. In fact, a new teacher often speaks too quickly and too much. But um, but yeah. they, they, but this idea of the of the the class, the what if I ask a, if I think it fits into both of the two we've talked about. What if I ask the class the question and nobody answers? Ooh, I know, what yes, do I do? exactly. Or yeah, what if I what if I want them to talk about something and nobody says anything? Yeah, yeah, yeah. you know. Uh, and then I think yeah, that leads in nicely to the, the to some of the things you've kind of mentioned under that. What what happens if I don't know that piece of grammar, or how do you know? What yeah. happens if they ask me about this? You know, yeah. Uh, yeah, 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 and yeah. How can I answer that? So, the, so not necessarily from the, just from the um, the um, the self doubt, but the the I, that pure fear of I don't know the answer. Um, yep. Yep. Uh, with it um, and one I think you mentioned when we were getting ready for the episode the, the fear of being observed is a, is a massive one in schools isn't it oh I think that's totally true and I think even the most uh, like confident um, teacher with their class if they're told tomorrow the inspector is coming in from whatever the department of education or from the head department of the university or from quality control of the academy or whatever and is going to inspect your class and watch your class i think even the most seasoned teacher will have sort of a nervous chill uh you know run yeah. down their spine at, at that idea i've written actually about this on on ways of trying to overcome that that fear of being observed and and i think i, I won't go into detail about it maybe we can put a link to that article if we can if i can dig it out again in the in the show notes but uh, um one thing that i found to try to get over that fear was to become a bit more proactive about it. So if I knew that I was under a situation where I'm going to be observed during the year, so like we were told, during the year you must submit to three observations, 
observations and so on. I would try to, I tried to, such a typical language school thing, three observations know, every year. I know, I know. <laughs> well, I would try to get ahead of it and I try to find out like, okay, who's going to observe me? And then I would say, you know, when, when you observe me, um, like I try to find out when the observation is going to come um, under the guise of saying, okay, uh, I'm really keen to use that observation to learn from it. So I'd like you to watch me for this, or I'd like, I'm going to be trying out this. Can you tell me how this goes? I think that, so, I, th I think that's, I think that's a good idea. Uh, yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to say it does depend on the type of observation though, doesn't it? That's true. That's so, true. Mate, have we done an episode on observation? I maybe? think we have indeed. Cause I seem to remember talking to you about I, I this know, before. I, I like it. It's <laughs> kind of, yeah. It's just, I mean, that, that I think that I think what you're saying works in that three um, in that three observation type of observation, which, which yeah. is often done as. Um, um, ah, if you're talking about that very impersonal observation where the person in the suit comes in, yeah, watches, exactly. doesn't say anything, and then walks the, the, out what, again, what you call the buzz observation or whatever, yeah. the dropping observation doesn't always work. But I, I agree. I think it's funny how you go from a point. I went, ended up working in a school where observation was just one of those things we did, and yeah. everybody observed all the time, and it becomes so second nature to uh, yes, yeah. We are we are veering now into observation territory. Are, yeah, let's go so back, let's go, let's back, go to, back to fears. Let's go back to fears. Yeah, I was. Um, yeah, I think there's a there's a blog post on study dot com. Okay, uh, which is the five biggest fears about teaching and uh, of becoming a teacher, how to overcome them. And I think we actually hit the uh, most of them. <clears throat> okay, well, couple. tell me what the five are. Okay, so number one is what if I'm not ready, which I think fits okay, into this our is our this is our imposter syndrome, syndrome yeah. whatever. Number yeah. two, what what if I make a mistake? Uh, which we that's kind of, true that is a that's a common fear for teachers like what if i explain something wrong as if as if once it's come out of you i've always found that to be ironic with teachers when they're like oh my gosh if i make a mistake and i explain it wrong then they'll learn english wrong forever yeah. and i'm like <laughs> if that's true then everything right you said they should learn forever as well and yet they don't so let's not worry about that I, too I got much a side check on this i was teaching uh, i was teaching uh, not a uh, not a language class per se i was teaching a class at the university on uh, tuesday and i was talking uh, uh, it was a class on boolean operators you know search, search engine stuff and okay. i did make a mistake and this, this chinese student looked at me and he said i think you've got it wrong i think you said it wrong and i said okay prove it to me uh with it and he sat for the rest of the lesson kind of drawing mathematical venn diagrams to see if i got it wrong and he hadn't found the answer by the end of it so and i said okay so jokingly so your homework is to is to prove it to me and he very very nicely sent me a powerpoint presentation he'd made uh, oh my this, gosh overnight to prove it <laughs> that i'd made a mistake <laughs> and i it was like over the moon that he'd done it you know yes i'd made a mistake but he turned it to such a great teaching point. yeah, yeah but, that's uh, true um okay number three we haven't um we haven't talked about yet uh what if i can't control my students okay yes yeah that's common that's a common thing i think that's also especially common if you're talking about teaching young learners so the kind of idea of like walking to a class full of like eight-year-olds and what happens if they just go mental yeah yeah and also okay. i think the one aspect which we don't often talk about because because you and i come uh, have quite i think privileged teaching environments and small classes and stuff uh, you know one of the things i think i would generally have a fear of is going into some of the context that i know my colleagues do which is you know around the world with 60 or 70 yeah. people in the class yeah. when i kids. started teaching i did have one class of 48 students and yeah that was a big fear it's yeah still i think i've blocked out some of that but i remember <laughs> do, do, trying to trying to do some of those activities with 50 people so uh, get, in, get into pairs <laughs> yeah running running dictation <laughs> um number four uh, we haven't talked about and it, we, um it's a, more with teaching kids i think what if yeah. the parents give me trouble yeah i when i was researching teacher fears i came across this a lot online the idea of like being afraid of the parents um i i, I think if you talk to many teachers in in some of the countries where like where i've worked in in europe um they would say that's a, a more and more common thing i don't know if that's true or not but often teachers will say parents are getting worse and worse uh, either they don't care or they're so like litigious you know they're always like coming in like demanding explanations for this that and the other yeah, um the sort I of my sisters, my accountability sister, for the teacher and all that stuff is something my that sisters makes both people. work in state education here and they would probably i'm sure if i asked them their top five fears given some of the stories and anecdotes they tell me the parents would be very high on the on the list I all right a, a lot of the times they're not actually worried about it's not the teaching that the, they're concerned with it is looking after the parents you know yeah uh, yeah yeah and number five the final one i think we have kind of mentioned what if i'm not good at 
Again, this is a little bit like the not ready. Or maybe it's also the other one, like, what if all of this has been for nothing and I'm actually a terrible teacher? I suppose that could be that. That's a kind of different fear than what if I'm just, what if people figure out I'm a fake? The other thing is like, what if people, what if this just wasn't for me? But that again, I think would be just like any profession, you know? Yeah. I mean, they do, they do sound, looking at the description, it sounds very much like the, the self doubt one that we've just talked about. Yeah. But yeah. I think, I mean, what if I'm not good at teaching good? It's so subjective that, you know, it's not for necessarily for you yeah. to say. I mean, that, <laughs> in fact, I, I would probably venture to say that the worst teachers don't, in fact, ask themselves that question. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> they're completely, they're what I would call depressingly optimistic about a lesson. You know, when I've, I've come out of watching something that's terrible and the teacher's like, I think that went quite well. Yeah. <laughs> like, well, wow, no, okay. And you go, really? Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. At that point, you know that feedback is going to be so tricky. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I'm, I, I'm, well, like, while we're talking, I'm looking for our episode guides. I don't think we've ever done an episode on observations, so maybe we should. Okay. Uh, hmm. uh, right. Okay. So that was, uh, yeah, so that was on study.com and we'll put the uh, put the link on uh, on our show notes of course I think since we're talking about fear yeah sh- you know I, I like to play with play with sounds or whatever so I've made a little timeline to do with fears do you want to listen oh yes please <laughs> Welcome to Timeline, the TEFL Commute's on-the-move game for teachers. In this episode of Timeline, we're not going to be dealing with things in date or time order. We're going to be dealing with fear in keeping with the episode. So draw yourself a mental climb, and on that climb, we're going to go up in order and deal with people's 10 biggest fears. And this is according to the fear of net.com. So we'll give you a start to get you clued up. At number 10 in the all-time list is trypophobia, which is the fear of holes. At number 9, you have aerophobia, the fear of flying. At number 8, you've got mesophobia, the fear of germs. At number 7, you've got claustrophobia, the fear of small spaces. At number 6, astrophobia, the fear of thunder and lightning, which takes us to the top 5. And that's where you come in. You're going to put them into the correct order. So here are the top five fears in a random order. Which do you think is five? Which do you think is four? Three, two, and number one. So, okay. So of those five, one of them is acrophobia, the fear of heights. One of them is ophidiophobia, the fear of snakes. One of them is cynophobia, the fear of dogs. One of them is arachnophobia, the fear of spiders. And the top five is completed by agoraphobia, the fear of open or crowded spaces. Okay, so what do you think is the top five in the correct order? So I've got to say them again. Acrophobia, ophidiophobia, agoraphobia, cynophobia, arachnophobia. I think that's the more. Okay, thinking time. <laughs> All right, here's your top five then. In the correct order, at number five, you've got cynophobia, which, are, which is the fear of dogs. Number four, agoraphobia, the fear of open or crowded spaces. Number three, acrophobia, the fear of heights. Number two, aphidiophobia, the fear of snakes. And number one, apparently, according to the fear of .net website, the biggest fear in the world is arachnophobia, the fear of spiders. So if you got any of those or all of those in the correct order, well done, give yourself a point and feel very smug. I'll see you again on another game of Timeline. Bye for now. (sighs) Did you get those? Yes. Well, not not all of them. The second part of our podcast, what I thought we could do is we've looked at what teachers are afraid of, but now I want to flip it over and look at what students are afraid of. And one of the things students are afraid of historically have been their teachers. So to start, I know we've just had the timeline break, but I'm going to pull us on to another kind of quizzy type break for you and for our listeners, because I've got gathered together here some clips of famous, fearsome 
teachers from films. So these wow, are there's scary. A lot of that famous fearsome teachers from films. <laughs> oh wow! Okay, yeah, but well, famous uh, like 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 uh, s- s- uh, famous scary movie teachers. <laughs> so the idea of a teacher in a movie being a scary person um, in one way or another. Uh, let's take a listen. If you're listening, I'll be going through which each of these are. But let's see if you can identify who these famous scary teachers are from movies. I don't expect many of you to appreciate the subtle science and exact art that is potion making. However, for those select few who possess the predisposition. You kids are soft. You lack discipline. But I've got news for you. You are mine now. You belong to me. You're not going to have your mommy's run behind you anymore and wipe your little douches. Oh, no. It's time now to turn this mush into muscles. One minute you're an inert lump, the next you're trying to castrate a fellow pupil. Nothing occurred between these two states? No, miss. Don't play the hero with me, Connolly. Yes? Brain, mouth, speak. Because I am hard, you will not like me. But the more you hate me, the more you will learn. I am hard, but I am fair. There are no two words in the English language more harmful than good job. All right, Sean, how many did you get? Well, um, I can, one I'm sure of. Uh, okay. One I'm going to get, because I, I, I don't think, I'm not sure if I've ever seen this one. Uh, so one I'm going to get by the voice and one uh, I've come across uh, somewhere else. So I think, so I'm going to say I've got two in a bit. <laughs> okay. Sna- I've right. got Snape. Uh, Snape's okay. obvious. So Snape, of course, yeah. Professor Snape from Harry Potter was our first clip. Yeah. The and, second and by clip. Far not the scariest teacher in Harry Potter. No, who 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 is the scariest teacher in uh, Harry Potter? Dolores. Ah, oh, no, Umbridge. Dolores Umbridge from uh, uh, from book five. Okay, but Professor Snape is sort of the archetypal, like is the at least in the early books is supposed to be the scary one, isn't it? Yeah, he? absolutely. But yeah. he, but obviously he has a there is a, a redemption curve for him. So uh, okay, uh, your number two, one, your second one, I well it's Schwarzenegger, isn't it? So, yes, a uh, young Schwarzenegger. It's so weird. If you see that clip, it's Schwarzenegger from. Do you know? Well, do you remember? No, I'm going to guess he was Kindergarten Cop, but it is a young yeah. Schwarzenegger. And it's funny because he was on uh, British. He's in Britain. He's been in Britain because of the new Terminator movie. A boy yeah. he looks a bit old these days. I was yeah. like, they're looking at like because it's the original cast members, and I can't remember yeah. her name uh, from Terminator. They look really, yeah. old. but that was Kindergarten Cop. Okay, yes, Kindergarten Cop was number two. Professor Snape one, Kindergarten Cop number and two, number three. I, I'm not sure. Tell me number three. Okay, this was just because it was in a list, and I don't know if I would consider this ranking as like the highest scary teacher. But it's Judy Dench. People right. may have recognized Judy Dench, uh, one of the teachers at the school in the film Notes on a Scan. So that was maybe a bit of a deeper cut there. That, that, was, a, that was very deep for us. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. Uh, number four is it's the drill sergeant, isn't it? Uh, yeah. Is that, um, uh, full metal jacket. Is that yeah. The film film? Full yeah. metal jacket. That was actually that clip. I had to use only a tiny bit of that because he's so full of profanity and racial slurs and all kinds of stuff. Oh, but yeah. it's one of the most famous. There's a couple of famous um, scenes of the drill sergeant. I suppose it's a bit of a stretch to consider him a teacher but i think he, he is teaching them he says in that clip um but yeah so he's he's another very scary instructor person yeah and keep, then the last one from the slurs because that means we have to tick an extra box when we put yeah, the podcast up yeah the last one i have no clue at all okay the last one i don't know the actor's name but it's a teacher in a, a recent movie called whiplash whiplash is about a drummer and who goes to this uh it, it, very like um exclusive jazz school i think in new york and he's learning to be a and, and the teacher there this movie was probably one of the worst teacher movies i've ever seen in the sense of worse in the the sense that i just felt sick at how this teacher behaved because he's a bully he's uh he he's he psychologically torments people he throws things at the students he's he can be incredibly violent he can be very charismatic and then suddenly turn on people you see how um the students you know like 
like respect him and are, are desperate to impress him and how he just kind of like manipulates that it's the most i would never recommend this movie it's a good movie but uh, i found it really hard <laughs> it's, a, it's a good movie but i'll never recommend it <laughs> no because well it's like the, it's like when you see like a really 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 scary movie and you're like that's a good movie i can't recommend it because i just spent half the time under the covers but um oh, but okay. yeah I've ne- i mean i've never i've never I've, I've seen it advertised and i've never really uh, it's never really drawn on it to me but yeah, yeah fair enough I so what, it's yeah, interesting you picked the, the the film was there because i i did books for change oh and, okay and, I, and, I, and what occurred to me about the books uh, thinking that we are recording on halloween is how much scary teachers in books are kind of have this halloween thing obviously what on the list uh i'm not going to go through them all but on the list there was snape of which is kind of wizards you know the kind of halloweeny yeah. thing then another of the teachers is uh miss hardbroom from a book series called the worst witch so there's the witch again then uh-huh. you've got the demon head Headmaster, you know, demon. Oh, uh, right, okay. Um, 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 Bridge that I mentioned from Harry Potter. Uh, then you get on, uh, you've got uh, somebody from a Neil Gaiman novel. Obviously, Neil Gaiman, uh, right, uh, Miss uh, Lupescu. Um, so he writes about that. The, that's in the Graveyard book. And then okay. finally, you've got uh, uh, Susan Stohiliet from uh, from Terry Pratchett's Discworld series, who's the granddaughter of death uh, in the book. So you're just interesting that in the book list that scary teachers do uh, fit in nicely to our to our uh, so they're all like wizards and witches yeah. and, and 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 demons and stuff like that i mean i suppose also one of the things like what makes a teacher scary i suppose everyone has that sort of memory of a, of a teacher who's like i suppose it's like they're bigger than you so if you're like it's like it's like you're you're all small people and there's one big person in front of all of you they have authority uh many scary teachers have like um Many scary, te- like have deep voices. Often I've heard that is sort of like what makes a, a teacher scary is if they have a very deep voice or or a very loud voice. Some of them just have scary faces, I suppose. <laughs> That's not right. do, do, do you think teachers deliberately make themselves scary in like the first lesson? I'm going to lay down the law. So you know, I rather, do like, the think that sergeant. is. I remember I've I've heard that as well. I remember when I started teaching young learners, you ask lots of um, teachers of young people uh, their advice, and you'll often find like two schools of thought, and one one school of thought is is sort of you know you know be nice or be yourself or da 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 but there's another school of thought of like they are not your friends they are you know like you need to you need to lay down the law hard and quick at the beginning and then you know then then you'll have their respect because otherwise they'll they'll walk all over you there's a famous um french movie which i didn't talk about called les choristes uh the the choir where the the teacher talks about the method which is uh his teaching method called um reaction counter reaction and he okay. illustrates it by holding up a hand and he says a hand and his hand comes up and then he says another hand and his, fir- his second hand grabs the first hand almost as like if it's slapping it down and he's like that is um action contre action like the like whatever whatever they do you have to like respond to it harder to like sort of slap it down and ensure silence and respect so yes i think there is that as well so you get teachers who kind of deliberately do that at the beginning I mean, these are my rules and that's it do you, do you exactly. have any do you, do you have any scary do you remember scary teachers of, of yourself do i have sc- I, I i remember some scary teachers i think both of us might touch on something here because of our age um, and where <laughs> we went to school uh i had um there were a couple of scary teachers i remember they were mostly men two teachers that i remember being scary were men um and one of them uh it would be I, I see he sort of had this very scary smile um and he also had a way of sort of like raising his voice like in a in in and it getting all red and sort of like red faced you know yelling yelling at us and so on um and also i remember another teacher uh who hit us uh he hit us with a ruler so um of course that was that was not a uh, you, you had a thing. ruler cane across my knuckles. I know oh, my wow. scary teacher, really old maths teacher. Uh, I'm not very good at math, and, uh, <laughs> and, I, and I wasn't the greatest student. I've been, been 
bit distracted and chatted mm-hmm. here and there. And if you, he would walk around the classroom in, in almost like a, a, a what would might be a, a almost cliched kind of old classroom with the teacher pacing up and down as he was giving, you know, you were supposed to be doing your time yes. tables or whatever. And if you were out of line, he would just wrap this cane across your knuckles. Man, it hurt. <laughs> oh, wait. Well, we got the ruler across the hand as oh, well, either just... on the palms or on the knuckles. So you have to turn your hand over. Of course, this is um, corporal punishment, which was uh, more common when we were children. We won't say when that was. Um, and I, I kind of, as I was looking at scary teachers, of course, this idea came up, you know, the images of the teacher with the cane in the hand or the paddle. I was really shocked to see that corporal punishment is still used in many U.S. states. Is it really? Yes. Wow, yeah, unbelievable. I'm just going to call it up here. Where is corporal punishment uh, still used in the United States? Um, bu- 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 Let bu- me bu- guess. In the South. Uh, yes, it was in the <laughs> South. Um, it's uh, it's common in the South. Um, they said, I've got numbers here from Wikipedia, um, more than 167,000 students were paddled in the 2011-2012 year. So, well, that's still almost 10 years ago. Maybe that's changed now, but they do say that it's not off the books yet. So pretty pretty wild that it is still is still common. Um, but obviously that would make things scary. Um, I found a, another term that I thought was um, really interesting looking at like scary teachers. This is a more recent one from around like seven or eight years ago. Okay. Um, and this is the idea of the not the scary teacher, but the creepy teacher. You know, like <laughs> a teacher who kind of just creeps you out who maybe stands a little bit too close to your desk or sort of, you know, the kind of like the creepy like hand on on the shoulder kind of thing you know that's often used in films as well the creepy sort of like hmm, crossing the line teacher which i expect is even more sort of present in people's minds now we're much more attuned to those kind of things yeah, yeah. um one that i heard was a like this was when i was looking at like teachers online teachers okay i don't know if this is true anymore but this was a thing that they called the creepy treehouse syndrome so the creepy treehouse syndrome was, it, it immediately draws up images of of halloween and uh, yeah <laughs> so this was this was like um the creepy treehouse okay so the creepy treehouse originally is supposed to be the thing where the teacher says hey guys i've built a treehouse and after school i'd like to invite you my class over and we're going to do some extra lessons in the tree house, you know, which is just, which is just like, oh. you know, like sort of like, no. Um, but the, uh, so the creepy tree house syndrome in terms of online is um, the situation in which a teacher forces the students to join their own private Facebook group or Instagram thing or something like that. And so it's sort of like a public space, uh, like a public private space. Well, but the idea was that it was sort of like, okay, I've made our own, Facebook group. Now, the reason this was called the Creepy Treehouse was sort of like, I think at the time, it was when Facebook was considered very much like your own private thing and you'd yeah. only have friends there. I think this is when that came out. So so the idea of, of doing anything that's not like private and pictures of your children and of of your parties and things like that was considered kind of weird. So the idea that uh, if you th- if you remember when the beginning is like people are beginning to think of using Facebook for other things, um, I suppose that could be considered creepy. I, I don't think it would be considered that way so much now. Maybe like you could have the, we're going to have our own Instagram group where we all share private photos. Yeah, that could be. I don't think you're a little... Uh, the, the little voice you're putting on is helping by uh, <laughs> yeah. I'm doing, like, that's my creepy um, voice I am like, a bit concerned about you Lindsay <laughs> <laughs> I don't know it's what I came across here um, yeah they, uh, I don't know um, uh, the other creepy treehouse syndrome they, they described it as any system or environment and so you could take a school that repulses a target user due to its closeness to or representation of an overbearing institution I'm not really sure what that means but the way I'd heard it was more like a teacher kind of forcing a class to kind of do this or inviting a class into a, a private space. And, yeah, and it just seemed I, a bit I, creepy. Yeah, I'm just thinking about your, your definition there. This, I'm just thinking this idea of, of the school being very close. It's almost uh, Stepford Wives. There's a, a cultural link yeah. that's probably over many people's heads. Um, kind of idea. Of, yeah. of, of a school and community being so intertwined. This yeah, and I think way, the creepy thing is, is it's like, done here. To try I think it's also it. the idea that you're kind of forced into it, probably because of a power imbalance. So the teacher's like, so I'd like, uh, you know, I'm going to invite a few special students. Sorry, I'm doing the creepy voice. You are, I'm yeah. going to invite a few special students to my special private group. Okay, come on. That's creepy. 
that's just creepy. <laughs> so anyway, so enough on that. Some listeners, if you've ever heard Lindsay doing that voice, run. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> the Tuffle Commute has our own private server yes, own where you can. Like, <laughs> can we try and do a game night? That's not going to work now, is it? <laughs> the Tuffle Commute game night, our own creepy space. Uh, yeah. Right. All <laughs> right. Let's <laughs> all of this creepy and scary stuff. Can we go nice again? Can we Let, have? Let's show some angel. I, I, I need the angels to wash out the sound of that voice. Of yeah, yours. bring it. And now it's time for this week's teaching philosophy from a Facebook meme. No matter how much pedagogy we know, no matter how many degrees we have, unless our students know that we care, they will not learn from us. Okay, I think we're almost coming to an end. The last thing I thought we could talk about in terms of fear and scary stuff is fear is also like a popular topic in classes, isn't it? I mean, what is the teacher who hasn't done a class on talking about phobias or things that people are afraid of? It's Don't Friday you? the 13th. Let's do yes, it it's Halloween. <laughs> what scares you? What's the scariest movie you've seen? Are you afraid of the dark? Yeah. Trees K. Decaphobe, by the way. Somebody's a fear... Fear, fear, somebody doesn't like the fear of 13 oh. I learned that when I worked in Greece and in Greece you can have a Paris Kivitris Kidekophobe that's somebody that's afraid of Fri- in Greek sorry not in Greek that's somebody that's afraid of Friday the 13th oh my god show off <laughs> I know <laughs> excellent excellent um, but yeah I mean the, the phobias lessons obviously you've taught phobia phobia lessons oh yeah I think you always do don't you I, yeah it's, it's there's often like, things of like I, I mean it is it, it's not only is it I think it's a common um uh, thing in course books you must have written many of them yeah <laughs> and, yes uh, it, yeah. it is that kind of as you say it's halloween Let, the, there are certain um points of the year where you drag out that extra lesson halloween being one the 13th uh being the other uh and there are lots of them online in fact, there were actually loads of good quality ones online i was looking because i was looking at what um what we might talk about in this one and i thought actually there are some seriously good lessons i mean obviously uh, one stop english uh, has some really good lessons on on uh, phobias on there and i found oh dear there were just lots of them but there's lots of different things you can do with them I mean, you've got the language yeah i mean often for, uh, like l- the fear lesson is really good often to talk about either like uh, to introduce like the dependent prepositions things like i'm afraid of um i'm terrified of, I'm, I'm terrified I'm of Lindsay's voice yes exactly <laughs> and there's also um often is used to teach things like the difference between terrified and terrifying um yes, you know the yes, in yeah, and yeah, the yeah, ed yeah. uh um adjectives uh use it's very useful to talk to to do your like describe a time when you were scared although that always i find is like a dangerous one so it's like describe a time when you were scared but not really scared so it scares everyone for real just the time yeah, when you're scared I, of like I, of something thing, nice like spiders <laughs> the other thing that the lessons are there for and i always i, I think the more experience i got to teach the more wary i've got this is they do kind of impose culture on some points as well there's a i know language and culture goes hand in hand but take, yeah. take friday the 13th for example this yeah. is a very uh, almost western idea in yeah. many countries it's not friday the 13th and you know in, in spain a, it's tuesday the 13th yeah, in greek in greece as well so you walk in i think as a as you know with your uh, maybe it's just me you know i think oh we've got friday the 13th when i when i was beginning teaching let's do a lesson and of course it's completely meaningless it's good to teach that bit of culture i uh, you know but yeah uh, i think we have to be wary of things being culture bound uh with with fears and uh especially with like halloween lessons and you yes know, it's often yeah. overlooking well, when like i worked in Mex- or- when i worked in mexico uh the halloween lesson was a no-no because they have the day of the dead and yeah, the exactly, halloween yeah. was seen very yeah. much as a cultural cultural imposition and as, a, as someone from north america if i did a halloween lesson it kind of was considered like you know i was i was coming there and trying to implant it curiously in other schools i worked in in mexico they were like well that's why we want you to do the class at this time of year because you are from the other culture Absolutely. so you can yeah, teach no, us I about it say, it's one of those I, 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 just having a reflective moment it's one of those things where I don't, I'm not saying we don't teach them but it is interesting that we teach them you know almost because of rather than necessarily perhaps taking in all the aspects of, of that and bringing other things yeah um, so um, if we're thinking of, I've, I've impressed you with my uh, Triske Decaphobe, I think uh, my other piece of, uh, my other remembrance of Greek is uh, Lathophobia, and I love, I just love oh, the word Lathophobia. Oh, wow. La- Lathophobia, I, I students, mm. you started with Glossophobia, so I thought we'd okay. finish with Lathophobia. Lathophobia is what? 
Uh, uh, I don't shoot, know. No, you got no You're idea. doing it now. You're doing it now. You're ex- you're exhibiting now. Well, glossophobia is the fear of speaking in a public place, as you said. Yeah. But laughophobia is it would actually perhaps lead to glossophobia in the terms of students because it's the fear of making mistakes. Ah. So if students if students are worried, you know, that students that stumble and don't speak yes. fluently, they're probably, or, or they uh, just don't want to speak in another language because they're scared of making mistakes yeah. and need it to so, be all so perfect. So they're, they're showing laphophobic tendencies. Wonderful. There you go. There Wonderful. You and on that note, eh? <laughs> I think on that note, I think we're going to wrap it up. Uh, this has been an episode of the Tuffle Commute. Uh, we'd be interested to hear from, as always, fair from listeners on, uh, in this case, what are you afraid of as a teacher or what teachers were you afraid of and uh, what made them scary? And um, do you have any recommendations of good fear lessons? We'll put uh, a few in the links for the show notes, which you can find at our website, tufflecommute.com. Where else can you find us, Sean? Uh, Tuffle Cuda Comedy, as you said, you can find us all over the place Spotify, Podomatic, iTunes, YouTube. James does a fabulous job of making sure you can find us wherever you are. Is this the creepy treehouse syndrome again? Yes. <laughs> Come and join us. Come and join our special Tuffle Commute group and tell a friend to come as well. Actually, seriously, yeah, do tell a friend to to, uh, to subscribe to our podcast. We try to release every two weeks um, episodes uh, and we go by seasons. Um, this has been season 10, episode three. And I think that does it for us. Bye-bye. See you for episode four. Bye bye everyone. I'm not go I'm not I'm not going there. Bye bye, Lindsay. Get help. <laughs>